Do you want to end games fast? Every single jungler below challenger sabotages their games because when they get kills, they mean absolutely nothing. So let's see what the challenger junglers do when they get kills. And if you guys don't stay for the last clip where I show you how even rank one junglers can get it wrong sometimes, well, yeah, you're a disgrace. This is Kanavi. His team just killed the enemy Corky. And with Talon respawning sooner, Kanavi will be 5v4ing for at least 10 seconds. So when you look at the map, how can we make sure this kill means something? What would you guys do? Some people might run back to their camp sit. Some people might recall to buy a large order for the upcoming dragon fight. But what do these really achieve? That's doing stuff for you, but it's not doing anything to the enemy team. So the top junglers, like Kanavi, do Rift Herald here. Now, why is that? The enemy team wants Rift Herald more than it does your red buff and Crux, because they have their own set of camps like that. Also, if Kanavi recalls to buy a large rod like we talked about, doesn't really do anything to the enemy team either. They would be more than happy for that because he's not taking advantage of the Corky who is dead. And this is so good because when you target these River of Objectors with numerical advantages, it forces the enemy team to make a decision. Do we just give this up or do we fight and try to win and lose because they can never win being at least a player down here. Now after recalling, Kanavi runs out to his bot side and as he runs out, his team kills the enemy mid laner. So because someone is dead on the enemy team, we need to take advantage of that. So how many of you would hit your Krugs before red buff here? How many of you would do the dragon? These aren't so bad, but isn't dragon going to be here kind of no matter what? He can always come back and do that, right? Which is why Kanavi drops the Rift Herald to siege mid lane. With no enemy mid laner there, it makes it so accessible. It's also the hardest tower in the game to break. So if you can get this, it opens up the rest of the map for you. It just so happens in this game that the Thresh gets caught as the tower dies. So they kill him and can keep pushing through mid lane here. Because that means that basically there's only three champions now to defend mid. So they take another tower on top of this. Isn't it still true they can all just run to dragon afterwards? Of course, but if we keep going, another fight breaks out, they hard win, and guess what happens soon after? The enemy team forfeits. Kanavi ran out of base here at around 18 minutes, 30 seconds. The game is ending a minute later. This is what taking advantage of the enemy death timers truly means. Now this is Chaos, multiple rank 1 EU West. Now he puts in so much hard work here to kill the enemy Nautilus, and after that, the whole enemy team is dead. So what is Chaos meant to do here? Well, because his mid laner is taking the top wave, he can think of doing something else. What about farming his camps? That sounds really good. Let's full clear our camps when the whole enemy team is dead. No, bro. You're clamped. Chaos runs mid, shoves the cannon wave, goes into the enemy bot side, takes the blue buff, takes the gromp, shoves out another wave so the enemy team misses some minions mid, their blue buff, their gromp, some minions bot. Basically, from these examples, Kanavi and Chaos have created a bigger gold advantage for the blue team. That's who you are representing at the end of the day. So if Chaos just farms his own camps here, what is he taking away from the enemy champions? Nothing, right? This is Eeks. Now, my mid laner, the Kled, kills two enemy champions, including the enemy mid, Galio. When I run out of base here, what should I do? How do I create the biggest loss possible for the red team? Now, it's quite easy for me to click to Grubs. And if you said Grubs, well done. But I can do something before four grubs. I'm very fed in this game, so I can kind of do the grubs whenever I want. So what I do beforehand, I shove out the mid lane. This means that if the enemy jungler does not come mid to get that wave, the blue team gets the wave, the red team does not. If I leave the wave there, both teams miss the wave, or maybe even the enemy jungler picks up the mid wave and the blue team actually misses out there. So I take the mid wave first, and then I check the enemy raptors. Because they are not up, then I move to grubs. This is a subtle improvement because we're maximizing the blue team's gold while trying to minimize the red team's gold in this situation. Now let's watch what you do. And again, make sure you stick around for the last clip because not everyone is safe. Now in this Emerald game, the friendly Sivir gets a kill on the enemy Aurelia, who is then dead for 30 seconds. So Talon runs bot to exploit the 5v4 and put pressure on the bot lane tier two tower. He also has Rift Held, so this could be potentially a game ending push. Kappa. The Talon ends up recalling. Now, why does he recall? Lots of people fall for this, and you're going to see someone very, very well known fall for this too soon. It's because they are on gold. They think that buying a big item here, whatever it is, matters. It does not matter. 
By the time you're back on the map, the enemy champion who is dead will be close to respawning, and it's more difficult to take those resources on the map with them having more numbers. Talon should have stayed on the map and helped his team capitalize on the dead enemy Aurelia. This death timer literally meant nothing. They should not have even killed the Aurelia here. In this master game, the red team kills the enemy bot lane who won't be back on the map for at least 40 seconds. So because of the 5v3 and the fact all of them are still very healthy, Gwen pings the Baron and the red team runs over there to secure it. Oh, wait, never mind. The Gwen stays on the bot side of the map chasing the jungle Talon and yes, they eventually kill the Cat Arena and they get this bot tower, whoop de doo This would have happened anyway. Not doing the Baron here still gives the enemy team a bit of hope. Killing the Cat Arena and getting an outer tier tower? Honestly, I wouldn't even be mad if I was the blue team. You guys are like pinching them. You need to add the uppercut into the arsenal. In this diamond game, the red team kills the enemy Renekton, thus making it a 5v4. Now they are still healthy enough to fight afterwards. So the Shaco pings the Rift Herald and all five of them move over to secure it. Oh, another Kappa. Shaco decides to do his red buff and Krugs and then recall. This does nothing in regards to exploiting Renekton's 30 second death timer. In this platinum game, we see the enemy Blitzcrank and Kaiser killing the friendly Draven bot. Soon after, the enemy Nocturne and Mundo are dead at Rift Herald. So the red team now has a 4v3 advantage. So what would you do as Hecarim here? Now, Hecarim is reaching a bit too far without no E, but he ends up doing the enemy blue buff, which is a great start because he can always come back and do what? Now, if you think Hecarim should shove out the top wave and get the top tower, then you might actually make it. I'm impressed. Instead, Hecarim runs all the way across to the enemy raptors and then runs back to his bot camps. You guys need to start putting some respect on waves and towers. Remember, both teams are missing gold here in the top lane. In the future, make sure it's just the enemy team that's missing golden experience. Now, before I show you this last clip, like the video. Thank you. This is a Gurren, and yes, he's getting flamed. In this game, his team kills the enemy Nautilus, making it a 5v4. Well done. They are all still full HP, so what can the red team do here to abuse their numerical advantage? Well, the Gurren pings the Baron to force the enemy to 4v5, and if they don't fight, then a Gurren's team just gets a free Baron. If they do fight, then they're fighting 4v5. Never mind, I'm cooked. A Gurren recalls here because... I need to get Rabadons. He needs to get Rabadons. Quote. But what though? Baron is doable with or without death cap because of the 5v4, and Uguren even realizes this a few seconds later. Bro, well, actually, should we have done this? So maybe we can forgive him. Instead, he goes to Dragon out of base, and guess what? The enemy team sneaks here? The Baron. It does not matter what items you can buy when you have a numbers advantage. The only reason you recall is because you are literally 1 HP and cannot heal up enough to stay on the map during the enemy's death timers. So if you guys are going to start winning your games a lot quicker and actually getting objectives and resources on the map the enemy team cares about, like the video again and leave a comment on what topics you want covered in the future. Coaching links are down below as well. Don't be shit by.